Hi, I'm Tim the Milkman, and you're watching Hot Rod Madness. Hot Rod Madness, where every car has a story. If you love rat rods, street rods, American classic muscle, even the unusual, including those ground pounding, tire smoking street machines, we got them. Fire them up. Hot Rod Madness style with your host, Tim the Milkman, along with the Hot Rod Madness crew. Welcome back to Hot Rod Madness. Let's join Tim the Milkman as he showcases more from Jake's collection. In this episode, we will view some absolutely incredible European military vehicles. Jake, this is the one we caught up to you at the show with, man. I remember this. What, what a phenomenal vehicle, man. Well, I mean, this is, everybody has a dream car, you know? Yeah. And when I was a kid growing up around these Volkswagens and having that orange thing, mm -hmm. my dad always wanted one of these because it was a Kubo wagon. And I grew up wanting one of these, and it's a 1944. Um, I imported this one from a, a town called Tyrol, Austria, where it went after the war. Uh, the person I got it from had it for many years. He restored it, so I purchased it like this. Mm -hmm. um, I've put a few hundred miles on it. And, you know, it's slow, 45 or so miles an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got a 25 horsepower engine in it. So, um, President's coming. Yeah, I had to put my standards <laughs> up there. So, and I've never looked up what these standards actually mean. Yeah. That's just the flags that came with the, with this Cold War version of the Kubel Wagon. So okay. this is an original German Army one. Yeah. I brought it out of Holland where it went after, served in the German Army. That's why it has a Dutch plate on the front, not a German plate. Somebody's okay. going to say that, but that's a Dutch plate because that's the last place it was registered. Okay. And I left it on there. Uh, I put the headlight covers on it, a couple things like that to make it more authentic. But this is just the way it was used in the German Army in 1973. So it's the same year as mm -hmm. the orange thing we started out talking about. Yeah. It's just the German Army version of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, looks perfectly restored, and man, this is an oddball-looking vehicle. This is such an odd thing, man. It looks like it could float. <laughs> well, it's kind of semi-amphibious, if you would say that. Yeah. I mean, out of all this stuff, this probably has the, the best ability to go through deeper water because yeah. okay. of the way the body's built. Yep. This is a Volkswagen Iltis, I-L-T-I-S. Iltis. Okay. So that means polecat in German. So this is a skunk. <laughs> it's a skunk. Um, but that's why it's so ugly. Okay, um, is that where the skunk works uh, garage comes into play? Eh, yeah, kind of, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So th the thing is, what you're noticing here is we have the entire lineage of, of VW staff cars, including mm -hmm. the one we're going to see next. But basically, I'm missing that DKW Munga. It should go between the Kubel wagon and uh -huh. this Cold War thing. Okay. Wow. I had one of those, but I sold it because it was just too darn slow, and I drive all my stuff. Uh, <laughs> it's too so slow. Anyway, this one is unique. <laughs> The other two are just two-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive. This has four-wheel drive with differential lock. Ah. It has a 1.8-liter Volkswagen engine in it. And I'll open the hood for you so you guys can see. It's all original. has the, the noise suppression cables and everything on it. Mm -hmm. um, the air intake's up there on the top. Um, it, this thing's fast. Of all these military vehicles, oh, including yeah. the one that took its place we're going to see next, this is the fastest one. This thing will cruise 70 miles an hour all day long. It huh. handles and drives great. And here in, the, here in the States, these vehicles have not caught on among collectors. Mm -hmm. If they knew what I knew, it'd be a different story. Really? Because this is the best one out of all of them. No, it has good. heat, actually, where the other ones don't. Okay. Um, and it drives great. So this way, this was actually a culmination of VW and Audi mm -hmm. uh, to come up with this. They started this in 1979. It took over from that Cold War thing. And um, these things had an open checkbook. This Iltis had an open checkbook developmental experience. Wow. Okay. from the German Army. They said, whatever it takes, yeah. we're going to do it. And then two of these, actually three of them, competed in the Paris to Dakar rally in 1980. Oh, okay. One of them won it. How about that? In a, in a yeah. military vehicle that had been modified. So, so, so I guess you got the full top and doors and everything for it? I do, but they make it even uglier. Yeah. I, I yeah. tend to only drive this one in, right. in, the, in the summer, you yeah. know. And, um, oh, yeah. You know, if you notice, it even has the same windshield as the thing does. Yeah. Mercedes. Camouflage. Uh, do you ever get in this one and go bouncing around the yard? Uh, I just got this one, actually. I just really? imported it. Yep. Okay. It, it, this is a, a 1990 uh, Mercedes Galanda wagon. Oh. So it's a G wagon, as you would call it. So, okay. um, you know, you see these a lot of times in Beverly Hills and stuff with big tires on them. You know, they, have, they make a hmm. modern version of this. Well, the modern version is way expensive, and it's not as capable as this. Okay. So this was made for the German Army. It continued that staff car 
uh, lineage that we've been talking about. So it went from the Kubelwagen to the Cold War thing mm -hmm. to the Iltis and then to this. Okay. And they used these until a few years ago. Uh, but this has a five-cylinder, uh, normally aspirated Mercedes diesel in it. Five-cylinder. Now, okay. this vehicle was actually built originally by a company called Steyr Pook, mm -hmm. or Pook, and that's who built the Pinsgauers. So that Steyr Pook Pinsgauer uh, was before this came along. So the first one of these was built in 1979. Mm -hmm. They used four-cylinder gas engines in some of them, six-cylinder gas engines in some of them for the German Army and for civilian use. I've actually had one of these that was used for a fire vehicle, wow. had a generator on board. Okay. Um, these are super capable. Um, it'll run 60 miles an hour all day long, but not one mile an hour over that. Yeah. Um, you know, it it's not plush on the inside, but it has dual lock and differentials front and rear. Yeah. And um, you know, they're they're really capable vehicles, and they drive really good. They're just not really fast. All right, man. Look, is that four wheel drive rabbit? Now, is that a kit, or is, what's going on here? <laughs> no. So everything you see here is factory. And basically, Volkswagen built a Synchro Golf, okay. which is a four-wheel drive Golf. All right. Originally, it, it wasn't jacked up like this. It didn't have the big brush guard and stuff on it, front and rear. Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't have the fender flares on it, but it still had the same engine in it. It's just a 1.8 liter regular old Golf engine. So this is a 1990, and this one is very rare. It's called a Volkswagen Golf Country. Wow. Now, what makes it rare is this is the all-round version. So they, they had four versions of these. They had a chrome edition and some, some random ones. This is the all-round. So this was the more basic one. It looks like a military vehicle, but mm -hmm. it's not. I like it because it's green. All the all-rounds were green like this. So this one's never even been painted. Um, paint's starting to fade in a couple of places. I probably should paint it, but I want to leave it all original. Mm -hmm. um, We've been talking about this company, Steyr Pook. So yeah. basically, Volkswagen built these vehicles as a regular synchro four-wheel drive Golf. They sent them over to Steyr Pook. Steyr Pook built the brush guard. They built the rear bumpers. They put the fender flares. They did all this stuff, and they actually lifted the vehicle up. Wow. And that's what made it into the Golf country. Okay. So this one is the most rare of all countries. A lot of people that even know about these vehicles do not know the all-round version existed, but they built 160 of these, and I have one of the 160. Um, and basically, it's just a stripped-down version, mm -hmm. and that's why they didn't make a lot of them. It doesn't have the plush interior. It doesn't have a four-spoke steering wheel. You know, okay. It doesn't have a sunroof. It doesn't have a lot of this stuff, which makes it more like a military vehicle. Um, I drive this one a lot, and you know, I take this stuff to cruise-ins and things like that, mm -hmm. I can drive this vehicle to a cruise in locally here in Athens, Georgia, and I will get more looks as soon as I show up and people coming to this vehicle yeah. than if I drive an armored vehicle yeah. or a fire truck or anything else. This gets more attention than anything else I own. Well, no doubt. If I saw you pull up in it, I'd be over asking, what the heck is that? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know it's of another. So, it's I, so odd and rare, you know, you don't. Well, it wow. drives so good. It? I mean, it drives, yeah. you know. Good, huh? Well, the thing is, being, being all-wheel drive, yeah. you know, one thing I didn't like about the Golfs and the Rabbits, I don't like torque steer with a front-wheel drive car. Okay. With this, it's gone. You don't yeah. have it because it's, it's synchronous four-wheel drive. Okay. Um, the tires were a little loud. These are the tires that came on it when I imported it from Holland. Um, but I've put probably 10,000 miles on this thing in the last couple of years, yeah. and I absolutely love driving it. Yeah, okay. Hey, man, this, this does not look like the average grocery getter. However, I can tell you drive it, and I'm looking, I'm looking through the... Yeah, I'm looking through yeah. the uh, windshield at a child's seat here. What? So I guess you uh, you haul your kids around in this thing. Well, I got one daughter. She's yeah. six. Her name's Ava. This is her favorite vehicle of all the things this we is. have. This is. This is. So this is a 1990 Volkswagen, what we call a T3 Doka, meaning it's a double cab. Okay. Uh, German Army again. This was a lot of these were used for communications. This one was used to laser paint targets. Wow! So in this other side over there, you'll see a there's a, a boot and there's a window that's blanked out, and that window that's blanked out has a has a flap in it. Yeah. That was made for a laser beam to point out and paint a target for laser guided missiles wow. or munitions or rockets or whatever you may have. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then in the back, there was a lot of radio communications equipment and stuff like that. And I've got all the, co the computer tables and stuff that came out of it. Yeah. Um, this one, I, this is actually my daily driver now. Yeah, yeah, I was so, gonna say, it's gotta be dependable. It's got a child seat in it. You, you drive this thing all the yeah. time. Well, so it's basically, it's a 1.6 liter diesel. Okay. So it gets over 30 miles to the gallon. Yeah. It runs any kind of diesel you wanna put in it. And it only has about 30,000 miles on it. So, you know, this is, it, the tires are great. It handles great. 
you know, I take her to school in the thing. If I need to go to the hardware store and get something and it's raining, it's covered in the back. Yeah. You know, it goes 60 miles an hour wide open, but I absolutely love driving it, and it's the one, she won't let me get rid of it. So, you know, it is what it is. has a couple of G3 rifle racks in it. So, you know, like all these, every vehicle we've talked about so far has a, a rifle rack in it except for the Golf. Oh, man, you know, I've, here in the States, you know, I, I've seen traditional backhoes and things, and I'm looking at this rig going, it's set up, this is a truck set up like a backhoe. Well, uh, it's another one of those Mercedes Unimogs. Yeah. It's called a 419, but it's not a Unimog, and it's not a Mercedes, because there's a whole lot of political stuff went on, and this is a Freightliner. A Freightliner. So, and it has a case backhoe on the back. Okay. So basically, it's a U.S. military vehicle. Yeah. Every part on it that's not the backhoe related part is a Mercedes Unimog, but there's nothing that says that anywhere on it okay. other than one plate that has a Mercedes logo. Wow. So, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's called a small emplacement uh, excavator. Okay. So this was made to dig foxholes with, you know, fix roads oh. that were messed up. Right. Um, right. You know, I've made it into a, a full blown tractor. It yeah. goes about 40 miles an hour on the road wide open, but you don't even want to take it on the road, really. No, you want um, to use this on the farm oh, here, I man. I use it all yeah. the time. I mean, Very I use handy. this thing all the time and it, you know, it, it's a transformer. I'll show you in a second. Okay. But I, I imported me some nice big tractor tires for it, four wheel drive, di diff lock. 110 horsepower, normally aspirated Mercedes diesel. Cool. Um, and it only has 1,300 miles on it. Oh, man, really? All right. I want to see you unfold this thing, man. All right. Let me throttle it up, and All I'll right. show you how you do it. Okay. All right. Wow, it's even got the stabilizers that come out on each side. So yep. you, you can dig whatever with that thing. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it's just a case backhoe is all yeah. it is. And it goes down it. 14 feet. It's super capable. I mean, I use it to lift stuff up with all the time. I mean, it's just really handy to have something like this, you know. Jake, man, I couldn't help but notice the guns here. That's some big old guns, man, on rubber tires. Yeah. That's different. No tracks. So, so what's the story on these? I'm looking at British tags on them. Yeah, so this is a what we call a Daimler Ferret. Okay. Um, it was used by the British Army. This is a 1956 model. They kept these in service until pretty much just after the Gulf War. Some of them were in the first in Desert Storm and mm -hmm. the Gulf War. Yeah, sure. um, so this one I actually purchased. It had already been imported, and um, it's just got a dummy Browning 1919 in it right now. I do have a the genuine article that I can put in there, but uh, uh, yeah. you get enough looks going down the road yeah, anyway. I bet, yeah, um, you, you got to know what you're doing just to own it. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's a little bit of a challenge to learn how to drive it. You'll see that as we go for a ride after a while. Okay. Um, it has a Rolls-Royce straight six engine in it. Oh. Um, it cruises about 50 to 60 miles an hour, 60s wide open tops. Mm -hmm. I usually don't even drive it that fast. Has a license plate, has brake lights, turn signals, headlights. <laughs> it is a street legal scout car. Yeah, okay. Uh, that has armor. Um, and, you know, it's got a lot of character to it. Um, my daughter loves this thing. I, I keep on wanting to kind of get something on tracks, and she's like, I won't let you sell the ferret. I, yeah. I guess it's because we've had it for a while, wow, and she's she kind of gotten it. used to it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's easier for her to climb in and out of it, I think. Um, but we took it to a Cars and Coffee event in sure. Athens uh, oh, a couple man. weeks ago. The kids would have a blast with this oh, thing. Yeah. She, she loves it. Yeah. She absolutely loves it. We do parades. We did the local Christmas parade and stuff like that in cool. it, you know. But, uh, but yeah, and it, it's, you know, the thing about having a wheeled vehicle like this is you can use it on the road. Mm -hmm. And it, something on tracks, I can use it on my property. But other than that, it's a little bit impractical. Yeah, this is uh, Alvis Fox. Hey, man, you promised me a ride in this thing. How many will it fit? Cruise three, so three. one driver and then a gunner and then the the cannon operator, a commander. Okay, so the whole top spins around like a tank and all. It and does. So can, yeah, yeah, this one uh, where the, the the ferret also that has a, a full turret swing, but yeah. but with that one the seat doesn't move. This okay. one when you guys are up in the crew positions you'll turn with the yeah. turret. Okay. So and you can spin wow. it all the way around if you want and things like that. So yeah, yeah. and uh, so basically this this took over from where the ferret left off, even though they were used simultaneously. Okay. Um, you know some of these are in still in service in some other countries. Mm -hmm. So this is also British, but like I said, other countries use them in their armies. Uh, even still today, there's a few of them in service. But where the ferret has the steel armor, this uh -huh. has really thick aluminum. Wow, aluminum! Armor. And they did that so they get a, a bigger vehicle that had 
it was easier to transport. You could pick one of these up with a helicopter, things like that, you know. So, okay. and this is this one's also fast. So it, even though it's real thick bodied, so it's, it's still lighter than yeah, normal just, armor? Just because of the difference in yeah. between steel and aluminum weight wise. Okay. Um, but this thing's fast. Of all the armored oh, vehicles, yeah. this is pretty much yeah. the fastest one. Okay. The problem is they're top heavy. So that turret's where all the weight is. So you have oh. to watch cornering and things like that. Yeah, a lot of yeah. these actually rolled over in service. Um, but it also had a coaxial machine gun inside the turret. That's what the, the gunner, the machine gunner would use. And then the other operator would work with the uh, smoke grenade tubes and or the cannon. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the driver's got his hands full trying to drive this pre-select transmission. So this thing selects the gears just like the ferret does, and you'll see how that, how, how that operates. Okay. This actually has a Jaguar engine in it. A Jaguar. Okay. Yeah, I see I'm looking at all the eyeglasses up there. I guess that's mirror direct that you can see out. Yeah. Every angle. So those are periscopes. The two larger yeah, ones periscope. are sights. You can see they have crosshairs in them. So when you're in there playing around when we go for a ride, you can look through the sights. Yeah. It has a set of day sights and a cool. set of night sights. The All night right. sights do work. Um, and, of course, this one is not as easy for the driver to drive. It really yeah. takes people in the turret to drive it because I can't see out. Yeah. The okay. ferret has the, the hatches, so it's a lot easier to see out. You got me revved up, man. I'm ready to go for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jake, man, this thing looks like a heavy beast. It looks like it weighs a lot, man. Uh, this one weighs about 22,000 pounds. Yeah, and rubber tired at that. Yeah, yep, absolutely. And it, it's just kind of like a, another part of the British Army fleet. You know, this okay. is a what we call an, it's an Alvis Saracen. Um, so this one has a Rolls-Royce engine in it as well. Mm -hmm. It has a, a 30 millimeter Browning machine gun mounted in the turret. Now, the funny thing is that has the same turret is what's on the ferret. Okay. They just fixed one of those on top of this, and the periscope's the same and all that sort of thing. On the back, that is a position for an anti-aircraft cannon. Mm -hmm. Don't have that on yeah. it right now, right. but that's what that yeah. position is for. So this is an armored personnel carrier, so you can haul, you know, 10 troops pretty comfortably and things like that with a crew of two. So you've got a driver, and you've got the commander slash gunner that's in the turret. Yeah, I was going to ask, how many people can you get in it? So you, 10 people well, in I'll there? I'll show you. Yeah. yeah, okay. So let's check it out. There we go, man. It does look like you got seating for quite a few in here this one's all original um it's it's still a work in progress so um i purchased it not running mm -hmm. and i'm having to learn a lot about it because i haven't had a saracen before yeah um but it is a lot like the ferret in some ways again the same gearbox configuration mm -hmm. roughly the same switches and knobs and all the ways that things work um because they didn't really change a lot of that stuff even though to an american it doesn't make a lot of sense yeah um but, you know, it's it's an all-original vehicle, and I'll probably have it run in a couple of weeks and uh, able to take it out and test it. Yeah, it looks like everything's still in it, man, for you to uh, yeah. get it running. It's like a time I mean, capsule. A, I mean, a lot of stuff that you get is not running, and uh, you pull it in your shop and go at it and get it up and going. Well, it, to, for a guy like me, I love to make things run. Yeah. It's kind of a waste of money if I buy something that already runs. Right. Like this one, I was able to get it at a decent price because it didn't okay. run. You know, and, and what happens a lot of times is a guy will buy one of these things, he has no mechanical aptitude, right. and he, he ends up learning that, yes, it leaks oil, yeah. it, it doesn't <laughs> run properly, it doesn't like modern fuels yeah. and all that sort of thing. It kind of loses its luster a little bit, he mm -hmm. stops driving it, then the gas dies, uh -huh. and then it won't run, and he can't find anybody to fix it, and then yeah. Jake buys it. And then Jake buys it, there you <laughs> so, go. And then I fix it. Yeah. So um, that's pretty much been the case with... with all this armored stuff we've been talking about. Wow, such a unique vehicle, such a unique collection you have. And, and you know, that's one thing about Hot Rod Madness. Here at HRM, man, it's, it's the passion that people have. And whether it be hot rods, customs, classics, all originals, you know, 
you get to see stuff like what Jake collects here, man. And, and man, we honor you for keeping this stuff going, dude. This is awesome. Appreciate you guys coming out. Oh, yeah, man. No problem. That's very cool stuff. <laughs> Thanks for watching and check back soon for more Hot Rod Madness.